Good morning, creatures. It is time for story time. Happy Halloween, everybody. It's the spookiest day of the year. Halloween is my favorite holiday. It's the best. Uh, and I'm going to read some spooky, scary stories for you guys today. I hope you're ready because it's going to be real good. We're going to start with Room on the Broom by Julia Donaldson, illustrated by Axel Scheffler. Room on the Broom. The witch had a cat and a hat that was black and long ginger hair and a braid down her back. How the cat purred and how the witch grinned as they sat on their broomstick and flew through the wind. But how the witch wailed and how the cat spat when the wind blew so wildly it blew off the hat. Down, cried the witch, and they flew to the ground. They searched for the hat, but no hat could be found. Then out of the bushes on thundering paws, there bounded a dog with the hat in his jaws. He dropped it politely, then eagerly said, as the witch pulled the hat firmly down on her head. I am a dog, as keen as can be. Is there room on the broom for a dog like me? Yes, cried the witch, and the dog clambered on. The witch tapped the broomstick, and whoosh, they were gone. Over the fields and the forest they flew. The dog wagged his tail as a stormy wind blew. The witch laughed out loud <laughs> and held on to her hat. But away blew the bow from her braid, just like that. Down, cried the witch, and they flew to the ground. They searched for the bow, but no bow could be found. Then out from a tree with an ear-splitting shriek, there flapped a green bird with the bow in her beak. She dropped it politely and bent her head low, then said, as the witch tied the braid in her bow, I am a bird, as green as can be. Is there room on the broom for a bird like me? Yes, cried the witch. And so the bird fluttered on. The witch tapped the broomstick and whoosh, they were gone. Over the reeds and the rivers they flew. The bird shrieked with glee as the stormy wind blew. They shot through the sky to the back of beyond. The witch clutched her bow, but let go of her wand. Down, cried the witch, and they flew to the ground. They searched for the wand, but no wand could be found. Then, all of a sudden, from out of a pond, leaped a dripping wet frog with a dripping wet wand. He dropped it politely and said with the croak, as the witch dried the wand on the fold of her cloak. I am a frog as clean as can be. Is there room on the broom for a frog like me? Yes, said the witch. So the frog, the frog bounded on. The witch tapped the broomstick and whoosh, they were gone. Over the moors and the mountains they flew. The frog jumped for joy and the broom snapped in two. Down fell the cat and the dog and the frog. Down they went tumbling into a bog. The witch's half broomstick flew into a cloud and the witch heard a roar that was scary and loud. I am a dragon as mean as can be and a witch with French fries tastes delicious to me. No, cried the witch flying higher and higher. The dragon flew after her breathing out fire. Help, cried the witch flying down to the ground. She looked all around, but no help could be found. The dragon grew, drew near with a glint in his eyes and said, Just this once, I'll have witch without fries. But just as he planned to begin on his feast, from out of a ditch rose a horrible beast. It was tall, dark, and sticky, and feathered and furred, and had four frightful heads and wings like a bird? Its terrible voice when it started to speak was a yowl and a growl and a croak and a shriek. It dripped and it squelched as it strode from the ditch. And it said to the dragon, Buzz off! That's my witch! The 
The dragon drew back and he started to shake. I'm sorry, he spluttered. I, I made a mistake. It's nice to have met you, but now I must fly. As he spread out his wings and was off through the sky. Then down flew the bird and down jumped the frog. Down climbed the cat and phew, said the dog. And thank you, oh, thank you, the grateful witch cried. Without you, I'd be in that dragon's inside. Then she filled up her cauldron and said with a grin, find something, everyone, throw something in. So the frog found the lily, the cat found a cone, the bird found a twig, and the dog found a bone. They threw them all in, and the witch stirred them well. And while she was stirring, she muttered a spell. Iggity, ziggity, zaggity, zoom! Then out rose a truly magnificent broom. With seats for the witch and the cat and the dog, a nest for the bird and a pool for the frog. Yes, cried the witch, and they all clambered on. The witch tapped the broomstick, and whoosh, they were gone. The end. That one's one of my favorite ones. I like her a lot. She's real good. She also did The Gruffalo and The Gruffalo's Child. She did Zog and the Flying Doctor. She did Detective Dog, Gold Star for Zog. All super, super fun. I like those a lot. Um, but next up, we're going to read uh, my favorite Hitchcock movie. Um, I know this maybe was not what you asked for today, but it's what you're getting. Um, we're going to get a horror movie and we're going to read Dun Dun! Creepy pair of underwear! Is there anything in this world more horrifying than a creepy pair of underwear? Underwear! Look at how creepy that underwear is. Horrifying. Creepy pair of underwear! This is by Aaron Reynolds um, and illustrated by Peter Brown. Jasper Rabbit needed new underwear. On Thursday, Mom took him to see the, to the underwear store and grabbed the last three packages of plain white. But as they headed for the checkout, Jasper spotted them. It's like a pretty normal underwear store. Creepy pair of underwear! So creepy, so comfy. They were glorious. Mom, Mom, can we get these? Jasper pleaded. I think they're a little too creepy, said Mom. They're not creepy, they're cool, said Jasper. I'm not a little bunny anymore. I'm a big rabbit now. Mom agreed to buy one pair. That night, Jasper wore his cool new underwear to bed. Do you want me to leave the hallway light on? Asked Dad. Dad, I'm not a little bunny anymore, said Jasper. I'm a big rabbit now. His dad shut the door. And that's when Jasper noticed. The underwear glowed. A ghoulish, greenish glow. He closed his eyes. He pulled up the covers. He buried his face in his pillow, but it didn't help. He could still see that ghoulish, greenish glow. Jasper leaped out of bed and put on a pair of plain white. He stuffed the creepy underwear into the bottom of his laundry hamper. He finally fell asleep. So this is it, guys, right? Like, we're done. The creepy underwear is at the bottom of the hamper. He's got his regular underwear on. It's going to be totally fine, right? Right? Cool. Okay. All right. But when he got up the next day, he was wearing the creepy underwear! <laughs> Jasper threw them in the, into the garbage can. It, he, he was still a big rabbit. He wasn't scared or anything. But he was done with scary underwear. After school, Jasper was doing his homework when he heard it. A scratchy, scraping sound coming from his dresser. He opened the drawer and they were back! Staring at him with that ghoulish, greenish glow. 
he snatched the creepy underwear out of the drawer. He grabbed a big envelope and some stamps. Bye-bye, scary underwear, he said, dropping the package in the mailbox. It's going to China. They'll definitely not come back from this, right, guys? There's no way that the underwear are going to be able to make their way back from China. Right, guys? Right, guys? Okay, okay. When he opened the front door the next morning, there they were! And those were chopsticks? His creepy pair of underwear had somehow returned from China, and it had brought back souvenirs. Jasper grabbed his mom's good sewing scissors. She didn't like him using them, but this was an underwear emergency. Snip, 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 snip. <laughs> this time, the creepy underwear were gone for good. At bedtime, he slowly opened his underwear drawer. Nothing. Just plain white undies. He searched under his bed. He shook out his lampshades. Whew. There was no sign of the creepy underwear. He went into the bathroom to comb his ears. They were back! What is the matter with you? His mom asked. You're so jittery lately. Nothing, he yelped. A grown rabbit couldn't be terrified of his underpants. I would be terrified of my underpants if they were creepy like this underpant. He seized the underwear. He snagged a shovel from the garage and he rode. He didn't stop pedaling until he reached Creek Hanger Hill. Jasper began to dig. He dug until his hole was dark and deep and 100% underwear proof. He dropped the underwear in. They gleamed from the bottom, that ghoulish, greenish glow. But not for long. The underwear are definitely not coming back from this, right, guys? Like 100% not happening, right? Right? When he got home, Jasper crept up to his dresser. They couldn't be in there. There was no way. Right? He reached for the handle. He peeked in. Nothing. Just plain white. Jasper smiled and turned out the light. It's, uh, it's pretty dark in there. There was just one problem. It was really dark in here, even for a big rabbit. Jasper turned on the light. He looked at his non-glowy pair of plain white, and he knew what he had to do. He got his shovel. Under the full moon, he pedaled to Creek Hanger Hill. The creepy underwear were a little muddy, but they still filled the room with that gentle, greenish glow. The next day, Jasper gathered his allowance money, went to the underwear store all by himself, just like a big rabbit. That night, Jasper wasn't scared at all. As he lay down to sleep, he smiled. And so did his underwear, because they had finally found somebody who wasn't scared of creepy underwear. Let's, well, let's take a look here. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, um, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, uh, 19, 20, 21, um, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 33 pairs of creepy underwear. 33! But you know what? They all look very happy. The end. Horrifying. In the, most, the most scariest book I could possibly read to you guys. It's so good. 
All right, we're going to do one more story to wrap up today's spooky story time. And it's going to be another really good one. This one's new um, and just came out recently. This is called The Little Ghost Who Was a Quilt. Um, and it's by Real Nason. The Little Ghost Who Was a Quilt. I really like the illustrations in this one. They're, they're very nice. I don't know anything about art, um, but I like the colors and yeah. <laughs> Once there was a little ghost who was a quilt. He didn't know why he was a quilt. His mom and dad and all his friends were sheets. They were light as air. They flew high and fast and whirled and twirled in the sky. They could even ride on a gust of wind and then whoosh back to the ground like they were going down an invisible slide. The little ghost who was a quilt was heavy because of his layers of fabric. It was hard for him to lift off, and he was a slow flyer. He got hot and sweaty when he tried to go faster. The only time he attempted to whirl and twirl, and didn't end well, that he whirled and twirled right down the stairs. Oh, buddy. One day, he and his friends were at the park when they heard someone coming. His friends zoomed away because ghosts are terrified of people but the little ghost couldn't escape quickly enough. He flopped over a bench. A family came along and a little boy who was eating an ice cream cone sat down beside him. The little ghost had never been so close to a human before and he felt fear in every fiber of his fabric. The boy only stayed a few minutes, but he dropped a big blob of melted ice cream right on the little ghost's face. How wooed. Later, when some other ghosts saw him, they laughed at the stain on his forehead. You can see he's got a little orange spot right there, buddy. The little ghost was embarrassed, and also very sticky. This guy's rolling over laughing. That's not very nice. The little ghost didn't like being different. His mom told him he had an ancestor who was a checkered tablecloth. Um, and his great-grandmother was an elegant lace curtain. Everyone said she was the most beautiful ghost they'd ever seen. But even knowing that, the little ghost didn't feel any better. He wished he was just one fabric and not a whole bunch of squares sewn together. The other ghosts called him scrappy, and he didn't like that. I wouldn't like that either. I think this is the checkered tablecloth ghost. And this is the elegant lace curtain ghost. I like the details in this. You can see the, the rain dripping from the ceiling. Um, like the scattered music pages. You've got a little key at the bottom here. I don't know what that key does, but I want to know. But there was one day that always cheered him up. Halloween. Today's Halloween. People seemed excited about ghosts on Halloween, and sometimes children dressed as them to trick or treat. Every year, the ghosts went to watch the festivities. They stayed silent and still in the trees and pretended to be decorations, far away from any humans. Which are the ghosts, and which are the children? Too heavy to hover. The little ghost who was a quilt usually draped himself over a clothesline. He never had a very good view. Yeah. This year, he had a better plan. He remembered how close he had been to the boy at the park, so he decided he would be brave and folded himself over a chair on the porch, right in the center of the action. That's a pretty good idea. Uh, we've got a person dressed as a, as a devil, a person dressed as a fox. we got a skeleton. Scary. Halloween night came, and the little ghost flew as fast as he could. But he was only halfway across the lawn when he heard people coming. 
at the last possible second, he flopped over the porch rail. So it goes bitter, batter, bitter, batter, bitter, batter. There's the pumpkin on the chair. Got a bat up here. Some pretty good decorations at this house. We got a witch in the yard. Ooh. A mom walked up the driveway with a little girl dressed as a ballerina. While the girl trick-or-treated, the mother asked the man at the door something. Oh, I think she was the witch in the yard. The ballerina. That's a werewolf at the house. And here is the little ghost who was a quilt. The next thing the ghost knew, the mom had picked him up. He was so scared he thought his seams might come unstitched. The mom wrapped the little ghost around the girl and put them both in a wagon. The girl had been cold, and now the little ghost was keeping her warm. He could hardly believe what was happening. She does look very cozy, though. I mean, I'd like a quilt to be drug around in a wagon. That sounds amazing. They headed down the street past his friends in their tree. No, don't go, one whispered. What are you doing? The little ghost decided to fly away as soon as the girl got out of the wagon to trick or treat again. But the mom didn't turn into the next yard or the one after that. By the time she finally walked up to a house, the little ghost was panicking. How would he get away? Oh, we got some good costumes here. We got this one. This person's the giraffe. Um, let's see. We got like a superhero here. Um, this looks like the guy from Scream. That's terrifying. We got like a baseball player. We got a robot. There's some good stuff here. The mother parked the wagon and carried the girl and the little ghost into the house. The little ghost didn't know what to do. He reminded himself to stay calm and be brave. The little ghost peeked around the room. There were Halloween decorations everywhere. He even saw a branch trimmed with lollipop ghosts. He looked just like his friends in the tree. These are some really good decorations. We got pumpkins, we got a spider web, we got this little birdie here, a crow, a spider hanging from the ceiling, all these ghosts, scary. The girl tucked the little ghost who was a quilt under her legs as she sorted her candy into piles. He felt surprisingly cozy. Maybe things would turn out okay after all. The girl ate a chocolate bar, and when she wiped her sticky fingers on the little ghost, he didn't even mind. After the little girl was asleep upstairs, her mom gently folded the little ghost who was a quilt. She smiled and admired his fabrics and traced her finger along the line of his stitching. It tickled. She set the little ghost on the couch and went upstairs too. When she was gone, he flew into the fireplace and out the chimney. His smile was three squares wide. He looked so happy. The little ghost friends cheered and rushed over to him. They were amazed by his courage and wanted to hear every detail of his adventure. They flew slowly along with him all the way home. The little ghost was so happy that he felt like he was floating even without trying. Everything that had happened was because he was a little bit different. Everything had happened because he was a quilt. The end. I like this quilt. There's some nice, some nice little squares in there. All right, that's it for our spooky stories today, guys. I hope you liked some of them. I hope you weren't too spooked. It's good to be spooked, not too spooked. Um, so happy Halloween. Um, I hope you um, are safe out there today and that you get some delicious candy, um, that you have a good time. And you maybe read a spooky book or watch a spooky movie. And drink some hot cocoa, maybe cuddle up with the quilt, who may or may not be a ghost. We just don't know. Um, and remember, we got story time every week here at 11 o'clock. Um, we have a story time tomorrow right here at 11 a.m. Um, with Maggie Pouncey um, reading Fort on the Moon. That's going to be a lot of fun. Um, so thanks, guys. Happy Halloween. And remember, 
Stay spooky.